Hi, I'm Laura Ledbetter. And I'm Lowell Joseph Gallen, and we welcome you to this installment of the Laura and Lowell Show. And we are very happy to have as our guest today Mark Stolzenberg, who is an actor and an acting coach, as well as a circus performer and wears many hats when he is or is not riding on a unicycle. And I hand this over to Laura uh, for some questions. Hi, Mark. Well, it's like deja vu coming back here to the Ripley Greer studio. I used to come here years ago and study, take workshops, and uh, it's a pleasure meeting you. And I just would like to know um, a little bit about your background with the studio here and what you do. Well, I uh, actually, I'm a professor at the New School University. Oh, okay. Where I created the curriculum for a course called Acting for Film and Television. That was about 15 years ago. Interesting. And then I started teaching on my own, just a little bit on the side, mostly for fun, because I enjoyed it. And everybody kept telling me, you're so good at this. You know? and I kept, so I kept doing it, and the Wonderful. classes were, And then I started, it, it grew into my own school. Wonderful. Which is called the New York Acting School for Film and Television. That's and great. so I rent space here. I'm like probably the most dominant uh, renter of the building yes. the space here. Yeah, and, here is uh, 131 West 72nd Street, yeah. between Broadway and Amsterdam. Columbus and Amsterdam. Columbus and Amsterdam. Not far from the Dakota. We are on the Upper West Side. Yeah, where I used to hang out with John Lennon oh, and how teach him how to play guitar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, so, I, the model of my life has always been following my passion. And I, and I, I'm not able to work in any kind of job that I don't really enjoy. It, Oh, I understand. <laughs> I'm the same way. So, uh, I've been down that road. Somehow I, I discovered that I really, you know... You're I an made, artist. I've made a living my whole life as an actor yes. and a circus artist and a writer. I write as well. Mm -hmm. I've got books published, screenplays, options, to you know, produce things. Uh, what kind of subjects do you like to write about? Right now books? I'm writing screenplays. 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 I have about four different screenplays that I've finished. I've optioned two of them. Uh, I have one script that I just finished. I shot a movie, oh. a feature film. It's in the That's can now. I'm just editing Good it. Uh, so, uh, and then I've written non-fiction, how to when I was younger, mm -hmm. how to books about mime, clowning, and comedy. Right. Like with a lot of pictures, they were very successful actually. But when you say mime, you mean like Marcel Marceau? Yeah. yeah. I, when I was younger, I was a mime. Uh, I have a book called uh, a Be a Mime. I have a book called Be a Clown and how to be really funny. So. I like that. Is it something you can they're, learn if it doesn't come really, naturally? For those of us who are not born that way, can you learn to be funny? Well, you got to have something to work question. with. That's a good question. It's a good question. It's like anything else. Nurture versus what? Nature. Nature, nurture yeah. versus nurture. Right. And, uh, nurture. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> uh, nurture <laughs> build on nature. But uh, if you don't no doubt that. some people just have, right. are just genuinely funny, but some people are funny and have no idea how to apply it in any kind of uh, methodical way to entertain. That's true. And other people are not so funny, but they can work as funny. Look at, I can think of certain TV, uh, I don't want to mention yes, names, right. I but I can think of certain TV people yes. who are very successful on television, supposedly as a comedian or funny person, and they're not really funny. So, uh, right. They just were determined and worked very hard to get where they are. I want to add a historical note about Marcel Marceau, who died a few years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. He was, as a young man, he, in the French Resistance, he's a Jew from France, and one of the ways he honed his uh, skills as a mine was he had to take Jewish children over the border to Switzerland. And it was very important to keep them calm and not panicky and hysterical. He would entertain them by, to d disarm them by, this was life and death situation. Right. Where if they made a lot of noise, then uh, they were going to be dead. And so was he. And he was able to get many uh, Jewish children over the border to Switzerland with the French resistance. And he used his skills as a comedian, as a pantomime, as a, a, right. a, a pantomime is called a mime. That's fine. Either uh, when I was uh, in the 1960s once, I think my aunt, I actually got to see him alive on Broadway. Uh, that's a good example of humor in the service of mankind where it's, the situation isn't funny at all, but you've got to be funny because you've got to right. save a life. Right. Back to you and screenplays, mm -hmm. mimes, and the other things you were telling us about in your acting school. Do you... Um, the thrust of my school is film and television work. Everything is on camera. 
Okay. So uh, it's a little different than theater or acting. Right. There's some of the principles are the same, but I specialize in camera work. I, that's what I, my first love is to be in front of the camera and relating to the camera. Right. That's important. I remember working background in films and learning a lot about the camera. Let's add a note here. Background used to be called an extra. Now it's called a background actor. Did I get it right? I think so. Because you're a pro and Laura's a pro, but me, I am hopefully yeah. a talent just raw. And like when I started acting again after 40 years, two years ago for the first time since high school, the kids would say, Laura, you got to watch some movies. You know, you're in them now. And I have to say that other than The Wizard of Oz, Mary Poppins, and The Sound of Music, I got a lot of homework to do, but I am trying. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to you. Um, you are both professionals, and you've worked your whole life in well, you different were, capacities. You were an extra uh, and back when yes. acting 15 films in one year, I think. I did 15 in one year, and it was like being in the military, basic training, and I learned a lot and how they roll the cameras back and do the different takes until they get it right. Along the way, were you, Mark, were you ever a background actor, or you skipped that? Uh, not really. I mean, a couple of times I did it, and that was enough <laughs> right. when I was young. Right. Uh, but uh, I haven't done any background work in the longest time. When I started, I can't do it. I two years ago, Laura right. and no, 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 I know. I, did, it, I, I had my experience. It, it's really a different thing. It's not really acting. I mean, no, it's not. It's but a that's different why thing. I, so, and it's I learned friend. that. And I, I have a friend that. who makes a living and makes her health insurance yes. now right. doing background work, and it's a it's a blessing for her. And she's also. A fabulous actress. Like, yes. She's not working enough as a principal, but she gets enough background work to sustain herself. And God bless her. And that's, know, that's how great. I felt when I was. I can't do it. Right. I'd rather do something else. Baron Rothschild, the founder of the Rothschild Banking House, who started with a small money lender's table in the Frankfurt ghetto, said, and apparently sometimes people do say these pithy statements attributed to them you can make a living selling matches if you sell enough of them. So what right. Mark is saying is his friend, when there ain't enough work as an uh, actor with a speaking part, because that's the definition. Well, it's the background, really, actor the background speaking, acting right? is not acting. It's not It's really not acting. acting. No. You're a body, you add to the body count. You're, 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 you're a of, filler. You're, you're part of the set. Yes. Yes. The moment you have a speaking part, you consider, well, is that the, the divide? The, the divide is that, supposedly, uh, if you become intrinsic to the storyline uh, in the script, if you are crucial to the action in the movie as an individual, then you become a principal in Even the if you don't speak, you right. could have a non-speaking right. pantomime part like Marcel Marceau. Or just a reaction shot. I did something in City Hall uh, with Al Pacino where I was just reacting to something. Bam, they gave me this great close-up. Uh, I worked it like crazy and it, I looked like just a star in the movie. Right. So, you know, I didn't have any lines in that particular That's film. Interesting. You, yeah. you cease yeah. to be a background actor, brackets, extra the moment you stand out as an individual. Background means you're part of the mass. You as an individual don't matter, you're part of the body count. But the moment you but have... No, you're moment, literally part of the art design and texture of the background. You're not considered really an actor. Right? You're not even like a person, like a prop. Almost. But a uh, human I, prop. I, I, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I mean, you do have to kind of stay in character and and do what you yes. what you have to do without right. you know uh, you're not allowed to look in the lens. That's a big no-no. They'll fire you for that. Um, but it's it's really um, it's also the way you're treated. You're not treated like really. Oh, Laura's heard, been telling I, me about I, that I, her I experience. When she said to me, okay. we, don't, well, we don't want to talk about that. We're not here to talk about that. We're not here to talk about unicycles. With well, three stars here. We don't need to talk right. about that. Two stars and a student. Yeah, okay. Me, I, two stars. I just and, discovered something with Mark. He knows um, we were just talking some circus stories, and um, the family I grew up with, Mark got the but chance no, to work with. Mark is up in the air on a unicycle, and yes. Laura was higher up in the air on a rope. And me, I stand on my hands and hang upside down from tree trunks, uh, tree branches, but I'm not really a circus performer yet. Back to both of you. Well, you, know, you were saying, you know, Lou Jacobs. Yes, let me, let me just bring I'd like a little, to hear. One quick, okay. my one quick Lou Jacobs story, line, which I like to quote him sure. on, even to my acting students. You asked me about being funny. Yeah. So Lou used to say, you go out there, you do something there, you know. <laughs> yeah. People laugh, then it's funny. <laughs> if they don't laugh, it ain't funny. That's 
That was that, that was, was the words of wisdom from Lou Jacobs. That's right, Mark. <laughs> I remember him saying that. Yeah. In 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 philosophy, you call that Occam's razor. Either you cut it or you don't. He was about a thousand years ago of uh, that Catholic philosopher in in uh, Europe, and he he cut through all the BS, and it was called his philosophical principle of cutting through the BS to the core was I think we have to Occam's okay. razor. So we well, made, thank you. Uh, we could continue this elsewhere. Sure. Okay, hold okay. on. Hi there, you have room? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know you wanted to do this. I, I 